Cad beginners, do you ever feel lost in the world of computer-aided design and swamped with countless tools, functions, and command line prompts? Well, I understand that feeling all too well as I had to endure that confusion for much longer than I hope you'll have to endure after watching this video. So today, I'm gonna reveal the most significant game changers, ones that you might not expect, and these strategies have transformed my career, making me a faster, more efficient, electrical design engineer. So stick around and let's uncover these needle movers together. So the first thing I'd recommend is create your own library or selection bins within the model. So what do I mean by that? So this is from a recent uh, electrical design project that I did. And what I mean, firstly, is what I like to do is have all of my components in the model and this model I will keep as kind of a template. So what I'll probably do on my next project, I will do a save as, keep all of my library and bins and whatnot, which we come to in a second, and just delete out the previous project and then just start again, but keeping my bins and my library within the model. And the reason for that is it's just far quicker just to have them out in the, in the model where you can just visually see everything. It takes a bit of time to set up, but it's totally worth it. Where you can just see all your commonly used components. It's far quicker than creating blocks and inserting blocks from components that you've made, or even searching through the built-in libraries that come with these CAD softwares. So that's the library. Now, what I mean by bins, and I don't tend to use these as much anymore, but you can have bins, like virtual bins like this. For example, my panel layout parts. So terminal blocks that I use, trunking sizes, core isolators, contactors, PLC modules, etc. And then I've got another bin over here, which is for all my door plates, similar sort of thing. For all my panel enclosure sizes as well. So again, this is just something that builds up within the model that we can just go back to and use over and over again. Okay, so on to my second tip now, and this is the difference between the model page, which we're on at the moment, and layout pages. So probably for the first year of using CAD, I never used the layout pages, which you can see down here, page one through to 16. I just did everything within the model. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, but I've just found it's much cleaner, much nicer to view the pages that are gonna be printed using the layout pages, which you can see here. And what you can do in these layout pages is you can double click in the viewport. And what this is, is it's basically looking into your model and then you can drag things around as suits. You can create a template layout as I've done here, which is separated from the viewport and yeah like i said it's just much cleaner nicer way to sort of view things that you've drawn in the model to then sort of see what that's going to look like on the page that you're going to be printing out or turning into a pdf so third tip guys this is using the mouse in the correct way and specifically mouse selection so what i mean is clicking and dragging the mouse from top left to bottom right or clicking and dragging the mouse from bottom right to top left. And the way it behaves in terms of selecting components is different based on which way you drag the mouse. So let's have a look at that. So let's focus on this little section here. What I wanna do is select this section here and move it along a little bit. So what I'm doing now, dragging from the top left to the bottom right, is the right way to do this. So I've clicked here, I'm dragging. You can see that it's gone down here, it's selected everything, now I'm dragging it to the right and I'm releasing. And that's selected all the components that I wanted. Now let's do the same thing, but from the opposite direction and I'll use the same size box in the same place as I did dragging left to right. OK, 
Okay, about there. So let's release. See, now what you see is it selected everything that was even the slightest bit within that box. So another example, let's say I, it's kind of a, a lazy man's feature. So I wanna move these two bits of text just along a little bit. And you can see that they're quite close to, to these arrows here. So dragging this way, it isn't selecting them. And it's quite narrow, I need to zoom in. So if I was to get them moving this way, I need to do it like that. Whereas if I drag my mouse the other way, it picks them up straight away. And I only have to be over them the slightest little bit to highlight them, to move them. So that is a tip that comes in really handy and I wish I knew that sooner. So hopefully you guys will benefit from that one. And now one final bonus tip, and this will save you a lot of time as well. So using CAD, we use the keyboard and I use the keyboard mostly for copying and moving. So we could do Control C, Control V, but my crosshair isn't on a convenient spot on the component to then snap it somewhere else in the drawing. So what we tend to do is we select it and then type copy, copy, enter, and then you can see that it goes dashed and I can choose which location I want to copy it. So let's say it's this top spot here. So I click and then I can snap it to this line here. And then there's automatically another one generated so I can do multiple multiple components very quickly. And it's a similar principle with move. So of course we can move things around by highlighting them and just clicking our crosshair, but it's not accurate. So I want an endpoint to snap onto. So I'll select the component, type in move, press enter, and then I can select my base point or end point. And that's a much more accurate way to move things. Anyway, the point I'm getting at, and it may seem insignificant, but continually having to type in move or copy, it does add up. And I would much rather just have to write C or M. And then I can just have one hand on the keyboard and one hand on the mouse, and I don't have to type. So what I recommend is the functions that you're using the most, like move or copy or rotate or whatever it might be, I recommend remapping the keyboard shortcuts to enable you to do that by just pressing a key and enter and getting straight to that function. It will save you a lot of time in the long run. Even though it might seem insignificant, it will help you in the long run, trust me. Now guys, just as I was leaving CAD to get into the rest of the video, I just had a thought. And I thought it'd be really good and valuable to you guys if I created you a basic template to download and use for yourselves. So what I've done is I've created you a quick template and you can download that through the link in the description. And this will give you the starting point to start doing some drawings of your own. So you've got some template pages there in the model and you've got a simple layout page as well. All I ask guys is a quick like of this video, it'd be really appreciated. Now let's get back into the rest of the video. Now I've been using CAD software for years and I've come to realize that actually I only use about 20% of its full capabilities. And I think if people knew that was the case, that you only need about 20% to be competent with it, I think more people would feel less overwhelmed or fearful about getting started and would start utilizing and benefiting from it much sooner. So I'm just going to tell you a quick story about when I got started using CAD and I would have got up to speed much quicker had I got some external help and I did do some research into the coaching and training that was available but felt that they didn't offer quite what I was looking for. So either they were too long, like some were three days in person, 
and hardly any online options. They were too advanced, so I didn't need to use CAD to the same level as an architect or m and &E designer would need. And I think they were too expensive. And not necessarily the monetary cost of the training, but more the time commitment, being that some of them were three days in person, which obviously includes travel time and travel costs. And if they were gonna to be too advanced or not focusing on the things that I was interested in, the essentials, then I just felt it wasn't something I was prepared to invest my time or money into. What I ultimately wanted was training that was short, to the point, without any fluff and show me the 20% that I'd be using 80% of the time. You know, that classic Pareto principle. Anyway, that right program wasn't available at the time, so I continued on struggling on my own, spent a lot of time teaching myself and did eventually get there. But I knew others would be in a similar position to me at some point in their journey. So what I decided to do is build something myself, which I'll give you a quick rundown on now. So the training is called CAD Crash Course. It's accessible online and it has an app that you can download to view everything from your phone, wherever you are, whenever you need. It teaches you that essential 20% that you'll be using 80 to 90% of the time. It's quick, it's to the point, and it's without any fluff. Like time is very important to me, so I felt I needed to be respectful of yours too. And finally, I think it's very reasonably priced, especially in terms of your time investment needed to get up to speed and feel confident using the software. So if you'd like to learn more about CAD Crash Course, there's a link in the description. And if you'd like to watch me designing and building the start of an electrical controls project using CAD, I'd recommend watching this video here.